happy Friday. Gonna be working on blah, blah, blah today. Doing my pirouettes right now on reverse, obviously. Gonna try my best to make the extra talking shit as quick as possible today. So I'm gonna do this reverse pirouette turn with the perfect body line the entire time. It's not gonna be shit. Well, I really did try. At least it wasn't fifth try today. Let's go to high bar. Should be a quick watch for you guys because I'm doing more of the front giant stuff. Same plan as Tuesday. I'm going to see how far I get, but no promises. It's going to be anything more than front giants. Those felt absolutely terrible and very incorrect, but it's progress, bitches. Excuse my language. It's progress, everybody. All right, I'm determined to make one more endo before I move on. I made endos, at least. I think that means I'm on the right track. I don't know. I, unfortunately, I think every single high bar day where I'm training this stuff is gonna be frustrating until I feel back to normal, basically, just to the point with front giants and endos. It's just very discouraging. I feel like I made so much progress on all the releases and dismounts and getting over certain fears and stuff like that. Now the one thing that I never had problems playing with or, or training is now like the biggest part of my high bar that I need to work on. All right, let's move on. All right, I'm going to palm before P-bars. The plan is to get back into flops and just make a handful of E-flops and D-Russians. Not really any set number, it's just kind of to get back into it. I haven't done it in probably a couple weeks now just because of the palm bruise. And it's not like the palm bruise is completely healed, but I am sick of training last half stuff and I want to give myself a break there, so I'm gonna play with this. Since I'm not really doing sequences and I'm kind of just focusing on Since I'm not doing sequences and I'm just focusing on one flop at a time It's a good time to kind of explain the main things that I'm looking for when doing these skills First and foremost, for any skills on palm horse, you wanna make sure that your circle starts nice and level. So you don't wanna see your butt go too high in the back because then your legs will drop in the front or vice versa. Makes it a lot harder to fight those skills, especially the Stockleys and Russians on one pommel. If you're really high on one side, because what goes up must come down. So I always try and make sure I start with a nice level circle. And when I travel out to the one pommel to do the two loops before the Stockleys, I try and exaggerate leaning on my right arm and driving my heels because if I make sure I do that, by the time I get to one pommel, my hips will be down instead of my butt being up, creating that up and down motion. And then the other main thing that I shoot for is having an even amount of leaning on both sides. You can also kind of listen to if you hear the hand placements. You want it to be an even tempo with every single hand placement. So a little dance, 
left, right, left, right, left, right. And sometimes on one pommel, especially for me, the right hand that's backwards, it's a little bit harder or more uncomfortable to lean more on that side. So it'll end up being left, right, left, right, left, which when that happens, you're basically fighting from the start and it's already gonna create that up and down motion. So when I'm doing one pommel loops by itself, or I'm doing Stockley's or Russians, I'm always trying to exaggerate leaning on that right arm and then being strong in that uncomfortable range. All right, so for the first attempt at the Stockley, it wasn't too bad. It felt very level traveling out and I thought I kept the speed up well. But this leads me to my next point, something that's very specific to flops on one handle. It's also something that's apparently controversial because every single American coach that I've ever talked to, they, they all say the same thing. So I'm assuming it's a cultural thing or I, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But if I'm doing the Stockley on the same pommel and I travel out and I'm doing circles this way, they all suggest to put my left hand down facing forwards. And then from there, turning my shoulders and holding on as long as I can and then letting go to finish the Stockley pull in front support, not rear support. And then doing the same thing in the second one, put your hand down facing that way, hold on, twist the shoulders, hold on as long as you can, and then take the hand off. Now, this is why those coaches are wrong. If you do the Stockley that way, and you reach to put your hand in early, even just doing this motion to put my hand in early, you notice my body position changed from nice and open to kind of rounded. What did we learn before? If you hump up in the back, it's going to create this up and down motion that makes it a lot harder to stay on the horse. So you might be thinking to yourself, what's the solution, Jake? Well, I'll tell you. You do those two one palm loops, and just like the travel out that I talked about before, you wanna drive the heels to ensure your hips stay down and your circle stays level. And once you are parallel with the handle, perpendicular to where the American coaches want you to be, you put your hand down when your body is in line with the handle. You push down, hold on a little bit with the other hand and pull the hips through and finish in rear support slash front support. And then for the second one, obviously you come around and instead of putting your hand down facing this way and kind of hollowing, you put your right hand down at the end of the first Stockley and drive your heels immediately to keep your hips down and put your hand down facing the other way push down and pull your hips through. I'll show you what I mean, hopefully on this one. The last one actually was kind of the right idea. I was a little closed off, but I didn't really push down and keep my shoulders on top of the pommel as much as I should have. Same thing also applies to Russians, but I'll get to that later. First of all, I'm not going to lie, the pressure was on there to make sure I didn't look like an idiot after explaining why I was right and the other way is wrong. I was a little nervous there. Now I can already tell you it's not exactly what I'm looking for because as I was turning I could feel my chest round and it closed me up a little bit, but this is where it's going to prove my point. But even though my chest was kind of hollow, I still waited to drive my heels until I put my hand down when I was parallel with the handle to ensure that even though I hollowed, I don't put my hand down and kind of just twist my shoulders and then dump it to the outside and fall. Here's a slow-mo replay to explain what I'm talking about. Now the other thing too that I like about this technique is it feels a lot more fluid when done this way. If you put your hand down to start the first Stockley facing straight forwards, it almost feels like you kind of have to stab your hand in there and it kind of stops your momentum of, of turning with your circle to do the Stockley. But if you do it the way that I'm trying to do it, as I turn, it's kind of like I'm just putting my hand down along the way and my torso is like constantly spinning almost at the same speed. <laughs> Initial thought, that one was a little bit more of a fight. Like I wasn't sure when I was starting the first Stockley if it was gonna be a good one. But I will take it to my grave that the reason I'm able to save those ones that I'm not as confident about is because I'm patient before I put that first hand down to make sure I'm right on top of the pommel and not 
dumping it to the outside. Now I'm switching out the camera angle to see when I travel out to do those two one pommel loops to see if I'm leaning evenly on both sides before I start the stock lead. That's usually the reason why I'll be more closed than I should be doing the stock leads is I might be patient enough before I put my hand down, but I also might not be leaning enough, which also forces me to close up. Because if I don't lean enough, and let's say my shoulder's only here, and I stay fully extended, my feet go down. But if my shoulder's here and I close up, I can keep my center of gravity, I guess, or my the majority of my mass, you get the point, over top of the pommel so I don't fall or tip over, whatever you wanna call it. But if I wanna keep that nice open circle and stay level, I have to lean even more just because I'm that tall. Well, even, even short guys, they still have to lean a lot if they want to stay open. It's not just for tall people. So, don't know if I'd call that a good example or a bad example. Actually, I'll say it's a good example because it proves that if I don't lean enough, my feet go down at one point and that usually makes me go up at one point. which then creates this up and down motion where I'm constantly fighting and not sure if it's gonna be a good one or it doesn't feel as smooth. All right, now this is something that I figured out with a little bit more experience just doing stock leads for so long. Just because you don't lean enough on one circle that might cause your feet to go down and then your butt to come up and then so on and so forth. That doesn't mean the rest of the turn is absolutely screwed. And that's why I'm saying the last turn was a good example. At the beginning of the first stock lead here, You see that I turn and I kind of hump up and my legs go a little bit high and as I'm finishing the first stock lead, my feet go down and kind of dip below the leather. But the second one was more level than the first. How does that happen? As I was going into that first stock lead and I realized that it was going up more than I'd like it to, the way I compensate for that is as I come around to catch the first stock lead and rear support, I'm ready to put my right hand down a little bit stronger and have a little bit more pressure pushing forwards to kind of offset the up and down motion and ensure that I get back into leaning enough on the right so I can stay level for the start of the second Stockley. Hopefully this one is a nice level Stockley Stockley the whole time and you can see the end result. First half of it was really good but the reason that messed up, and it might be hard to tell from this angle, is as I came around to finish in rear support on the first stock lead, I kind of scooped my toes a little bit, so I didn't pull my hips through to keep it as level as I should have. But when I put my right hand down, I kind of sunk into it instead of the opposite turn where I was extra proactive to put my hand down strong and lean extra to keep the speed up and keep it level. Other than the uh, last quarter turn, stepping into the handles being the worst part, kind of what I'm looking for on the Stockley. The speed stayed relatively the same the whole time. My torso didn't stop at one point and then start twisting again. It was kind of fluid. It wasn't as open as I would have liked it to be, especially on the last quarter turn. That's just because I got ahead of myself and my arms are a little tired. Because I'm running out of time, I wanted to also do the D-Russians and explain what goes into that, but I can do that next week. I'm gonna train it a little bit, but I need to get going because I have to finish P-bars before all the college guys get here. tired and I'm starting to overcompensate by kind of hollowing or piking and just trying to use speed as the answer instead of focusing on the right ideas just to make it nice and level and all the stuff that I was talking about with Stockley. Basically to sum it up, those one pommel Russians and one pommel Stockleys get a lot easier and A, you understand them and B, you start with a nice level circle and 
you have the right timing with your hand placements instead of just trying to rush into it and use speed as the answer. All right, I'm going to P-Bars. free hip and harada in the same turn haven't done any upper arm stuff legitimately since doing the front uprise diom and whacking my knee because also my chest and clavicle area kind of flared up it feels a lot better now and it doesn't hurt but it's definitely weak just because i haven't been training it so if the haradas are kind of rough and, and low that's why the equivalent of like stubbing your toe you just have to like sit in it for a couple seconds if you didn't hear what he just said it's like getting your balls stuck in your zipper <laughs> The last like four or five turns of free hips have just sucked. I feel like I'm getting tired pressing overhead, so I'm rushing the turn on the way in and I start arching. <laughs> I'm gonna try one more. Or I try and make one more free hip. Yeah, I might have. 